Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Bay Saga and I am the crafty chick behind Shell Speeds. So I'm filming from a slightly different location for this video because we are in the final stages of some major home renovations. So unfortunately my indoor craft room where I normally film my intros is full of stuff. So I'm coming to you from my kitchen today, but I wanted to share what we will be making in today's video with you and to give you a little bit of a preview of this gorgeous cup. So we are going to be working with alcohol inks to make this and I don't know about you, but I know that they can be intimidating for a lot of people. One of the reasons is they don't behave quite like other inks do. They're not water soluble, so you can't thin them down with water and they kind of take on a mind of their own, especially on a curved surface like a cup. So I'm going to be kind of helping you to just fall in love a little bit with alcohol inks and not feel so intimidated by working with them. We're gonna be using some of these techniques to create these beautiful floral designs on this cup. And this video is a little bit longer than what I would normally do, but I didn't really wanna rush through some of these parts because I want you all to feel comfortable working with alcohol inks. So as always, everything that I use in this video will be listed and linked in the description box below. So make sure to check that area out. You might even find some discount codes from some of my favorite places that I like to get my crafting supplies from. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and make sure to hit that subscribe button because it really helps out the channel. The other thing I wanted to mention is I do have a Facebook group and we are small right now, but we are a bunch of crafty people who really enjoy helping each other out and learning how to do something new. So if you guys are ready to get started on this cup, let's go. To get started, you're gonna take a fully painted tumbler. This one is painted with Rust-Oleum two times flat white. And you're also gonna to wanna to put some 91% alcohol in a little applicator bottle. I'm gonna start off by applying this plain alcohol to the bottom rim of the cup. This is going to act like a floating layer to float our color on our cup. I'm gonna come in with the lighter of my two base colors, which is Pool from Ranger Alcohol Ink. And we are just going to lightly drop and spread this color down the bottom. Because this is a curved surface, it's going to naturally move around the body of the cup. And that plain alcohol is just going to help float that color. Now, this next technique that I'm doing was hard for me to film, which is why this video took so long to do. But basically, to get that alcohol to move where I want, I go ahead and blow on it. Alternatively, you could use a straw. I don't like to use a heat gun unless it has a temperature setting that I can put on low because heat will also start to set your color. Um, I'm gonna come back in as needed with plain alcohol and just blow and manipulate this color on my cup until I get a really nice start of a flow of color. I'm going for something kind of like a pool or maybe a lake look. Alternatively, you can use an airbrush with just the air, and this is a great technique to move around color quickly. However, if you have large puddles, it can cause excess splatter to come out. If you get that, you can take come and back in with a paintbrush and use the paintbrush to soften out any of those splatters that you don't want to have present once the paint dries. Once you have all of that covered the way you would like, we are gonna come in with our second color. To do that, I am gonna take that plain alcohol again and float it on the rim. Now we're gonna come in with Stream from Ranger, and this is the darker of the two colors, but it is going to flow into a beautiful, beautiful aqua teal color. Once again, I'm blowing this just to start getting the motion and getting it to flow on the cup, and then I'm going to tilt this cup with a bunch more alcohol to float it and let gravity kind of do its thing and float this color to the bottom of the cup. Um, as you can see here, it's going to drip and kind of create these waves and striations. And from there, we're gonna come in and take a paper towel and blot most of that up. This is gonna leave us with a very soft sky effect and it's totally optional, but um, just remember whatever paint you have on your base, can inadvertently mix with other colors that you layer it over. So I like to start off with a more subtle look, but feel free to do whatever you think is creatively best for you. 
Now we're ready to move on to using our flower colors. And for that, I have boysenberry, fiesta, flamingo, and coral from Pinata. The other colors are from Ranger. And as always, I'll have this all listed in the description box below. You can use whatever colors you'd like. Pretty much anything looks good against that back sky color that we started off with. I'm using my parchment paper over my surface as my palette and to also protect. And we're gonna come in with a round flat brush and this is a i believe it's a number eight but i will have the right number listed and we're going to start off by making half c or parentheses style lines all around the center of this rose i wanted to add that you want to make sure your brush is loaded with very little ink and very little alcohol if you look at the purple rose next to this you'll notice that the petals are not as defined. That's because I had a little too much alcohol on my brush. I'll show you how I can fix that up in a later step. Um, now I'm going to come in with my two coral light colors, flamingo and coral, and we're just going to kind of blend those together and we're going to start on a third flower. Uh, you can map this out however you want. I will only be showing these three flowers today, um, but feel free to place it anywhere you like. As you see, as I'm making these comma marks, you can see this veining that ends up appearing every time I lay down some of this ink. What that is doing is reacting not only with the background color, but with the amount of alcohol and ink that I have on my brush bristles. Um, you'll notice that when you end the stroke, you'll have a higher concentration of color than at the beginning. I use all of these attributes of alcohol inks to my advantage. I'm looking for shading and I'm looking to create these petals um, semi-realistically. As you get further out, you're going to want to press down with your brush as you make that comma shape and also do a little wiggle. That's going to flatten the bristles a little bit and allow you to get a broader petal shape as you move outward into the flower. Um, I'm adding just enough to go ahead and fill in space because I want this to be quite a full rose look when I'm done blending my colors together. We're going to continue in this fashion until you've made a flower the shape that you would like it to be. One thing that I will take time to let you guys know is everything that you do using the alcohol inks and plain alcohol leaves some kind of effect. What you see me doing here is coming back in with just the coral color from Pinata, and I'm just underlining all of these comma style marks with that color. Not only will you see that dark veining color come through, but anywhere where that color pooled, you will also see interest and texture. This is one of the reasons why I love alcohol inks. It really takes care of the detail work for you simply by making very small movements and strokes. Um, you want to take care not to load your brush with too much product or too much plain alcohol because instead of getting this nice effect, it's going to pool and sometimes even bleed into each other and kind of distort your petal shape. We'll get to that in a moment and I will also show you how to fix mistakes like that. So you're going to continue to add color to these sh petal shapes until you get the look that you're going for. Um, I play, I could play around with these flowers for hours because every time you add something different, it changes. So now I'm going to come in and this purple rose that you saw me begin with just kind of muddled together and didn't give me the definition I wanted. So I come in with Fiesta, which is a light, bright magenta color, and I thought it would be a nice accent for this purple. And I'm just going to come in and accent where these petal shapes should be similar to how I did on the coral colored rose. This is just going to add a little bit of definition and highlight so that these areas that don't have any petal definition will get some kind of faux petal definition to them. This is going to help to create the look that the rose was tighter when it was kind of opening and just kind of help keep with the design and let your eye still believe that it's a flower shape. I alternate between adding color and dipping back in with just a little bit of alcohol to make sure that everything still kind of flows. You want to make sure that you do not have a lot of alcohol on your brush, so use a paper towel to blot it off as you're changing colors. Now I'm going in and I attempted to blend this with just some alcohol and as you can see, 
it just turned into one blob of alcohol ink mess. Now, I'm sure that this is what has happened to a lot of you, and maybe you thought you ruined your project. So this is kind of the part of the video where I'm really happy to show you how we can fix this. Number one, you're gonna let that dry for just a few seconds, because anytime you come in with product, you're kind of re-wetting that ink. So once it's dry enough, we're gonna come in with some plain alcohol, and I wanna create the idea that there's some little ruffles to these petals. One of the things that you're gonna notice is I switched to this liner brush because I did need a thinner application. I will have all of the sizes of the brushes listed and linked below. But as you see me doing here, I'm taking the very tip of that liner brush and I'm just making little squiggle lines in the shape of a comma or a parentheses around the perimeter and in some of the spots um, inside the flower structure. Now you see me coming back in with that liner brush and I'm loading it with the boysenberry and I'm creating these squiggled outlines. This is gonna give this flower the look of maybe a carnation or possibly like a bachelor's button. And really what we're looking for now is to utilize the colors that have kind of modeled and blended together as spaces that we will now turn into a more defined flower structure. Um, continue to load your brush. The only reason I added a little bit of alcohol is because the inks were drying, but you really want this to be a bold, solid color because it's what's giving us our definition. We're kind of basically forcing the paint into that veining structure to create the look of our petals. Um, once you have that laid down the way you would like, we're gonna come in and accent some of the other flowers. To do that, I'm gonna come in with plain alcohol and just along the bottom of some of these petals, I am going to come in and drag my liner brush through. As you can see, what that does is not only reconstitute the color above it and cause some of it to drag, but it also creates brand new little cells and veining interests that just give these rose petals that much more of a realistic look. I can't stress that less is more in this technique. I am loading the brush with very little alcohol, just dipping the tip in as I'm doing this. Keep in mind, you may have to work quickly if you get a little too much on your brush. So just be ready to go ahead and give a quick little blow onto those petals if you feel like you've loaded too much alcohol. This technique is great for blending out colors into your background where you really want to have that nice monochromatic fade from a darker tip to your petal to a lighter one. It's much easier to use this technique than to try to start off with lighter colors and accent with dark because the dark colors tend to take over the um, whatever you're trying to design very quickly. After you have all of your flowers looking the way that you would like, we're gonna move into adding some greenery to this piece. To add our greenery, I'm gonna take lettuce from Ranger and we're gonna just put a little bit of that onto our palette. And using our liner brush, we are going to saturate our liner brush with quite a fair amount of ink. Um, the reason why is we are gonna be dragging this liner brush down the length of the cup and we wanna make sure we have enough ink to complete that stroke. As you see me doing here, I'm allowing a very shaky line to happen just by wiggling my wrist a little bit. And the kind of pattern I'm going for for this cup is more of like a lattice vine look. So I'm trying to pick points where I know the vines are going to overlap and also touch our flowers in certain places. Keep in mind, we will be adding some leaves. So try to envision where you'd like each one of your elements placed as you're laying down these vine lines. As an added accent, once I have my footprint of my vines down, I load my brush back up with ink and I come back over just down one side, possibly kind of crossing over and getting the other side. What this is gonna do is add some interest and thickness to the vine to give it a real idea that it's supporting the flowers. Don't worry if you have that negative space as you draw your lines, because that actually adds highlight and interest to this piece. We're going for a watercolor look, and if you're familiar with watercolor techniques, a lot of what helps to bring that interest is learning how to use that negative space where your watercolor brush doesn't actually put down any ink or pigment. Now we're gonna come in with a flat brush. This is a number 12 flat, and once again, we are using a watercolor brush with beautiful soft bristles that holds the ink really well. 
Make sure you have enough ink on your brush, but don't dip it into the plain alcohol um, unless you're doing it to reconstitute the ink. We want a nice crisp edge to our brush because we are gonna be using a one stroke style technique to apply this leaf. So you're gonna start with your brush at a point and you're going to just hold the edge of the brush to the cup and squiggle up until the other side of the brush point meets the cup. We're gonna come back down and do the same thing, always working off the edge of the brush. This is much easier to watch what I'm doing than to listen to me explain it, um, because really it's kind of a motion with your wrist and learning how to use the bristles of the brush to your advantage and to use the shape of the brush to do all of the work. By adding your leaves using this type of one stroke technique, not only is it uh, a lot easier than trying to draw it out with let's say the liner brush, but it's also giving us all of the veining interest and texture that you normally see on leaves. If you get a little too much of a blob, just remember to take the brush away and go ahead and blow on that a little bit just to set the ink so that it stops moving. What you're left with is a really pretty veining look. Now to move on to the accenting. This is my favorite part because this is where we really get to have a little bit of creative fun. I'm gonna be using Brass from Pinata, which is a mica-infused alcohol ink. This can be used in, a, in an airbrush, this can be used using applicator sponges, or as you'll see me doing here, applying it using my liner brush. Make sure it stays mixed up though because those particles will settle. Once your brush is loaded, go ahead and drag it down the center of your leaves. This is gonna have kind of a two-fold effect. The alcohol in the um, this particular mixative is going to create kind of a white line while you're also gonna be depositing all of that sparkle. You're gonna go over and take care of doing all of your leaves and also we're going to run it down the middle of our vines so that we have a little bit of accent on those as well. Now we're gonna move on to my other favorite part of this tutorial, and that's adding our Lumi Air Luster Flakes. These are from Jet Age Studio, and these are a really high flash opal flake that I'm going to be applying using flake and glitter glue. This glue stays tacky, so even after it's dry, it will give that kind of tack to allow the flake to stick. I'm gonna just apply a little bit to this of this to my palette here and using whichever brush you feel comfortable applying, I'm gonna accent some of the areas on my cup. Keep in mind, these are gonna be a little hard to see, so I'm gonna to explain to you how you can decide where your uh, flakes are gonna go once you've applied your glue. So this is totally personal preference. Um, for a design like this, where it is a very closed, uh, tight look, I kind of go around the edge a little bit and then I pick little points to create those same little parentheses marks all around the inside of this. I just want little tiny accents because I'm just trying to hit this with a little bit of sparkle. We're gonna continue adding the glue to areas of our leaves and our petals, just like you see me doing here. And we're gonna wait for about 20 to 30 minutes for this to dry. Depending on the climate of your studio, you may have to wait up to an hour. Um, you can test this really easily by either taking the tip of the brush that we will use to apply the foils or one of your fingers over one of the areas you know there's glue and test to make sure it doesn't smear. It will remain tacky, but it should not smear or come off onto your finger.
Now for the fun part, we're gonna take this floofy brush. Um, this is just an old round brush that I had and I fluffed the, bris br the bristles up over time and I'm gonna reach into that little pot and these things are like statically charged. They will stick to the brush and just about everything else. Um, so what you wanna do is kind of tamp that down onto that line of glue and then gently brush over it with your brush. The best part about these flakes though is that they don't actually stick to the cup unless there's glue there. So cleaning up any of the fallout is gonna be super easy. Um, as you see, a lot of it does fall onto your parchment paper, which is another good reason to have a protected work surface because this isn't like glitter that you can really dump back into the container. And instead of wasting all of that really pretty sparkle, I like to kind of dip my brush down onto my parchment paper and pick up um, the fallout pieces and use those to keep applying to the glued areas. To once we're done applying this all over the cup, I will show you just how easy it is to make sure all of that excess fallout is off of your cup. To clean it up, you're just gonna run your hand down the cup like you see me doing here. And yes, your hand will get sparkly, but that's not a bad thing, and it will wash off with soap and water. As you can see here, you're left with nothing but those beautiful areas. Now it's time to add our first coats of epoxy, and to do that, I've mixed up 20 milliliters. I do want a little bit thicker of a flood coat for this because we will be adding a touch of glitter to this, I mean, y'all didn't think that I was going to make a cup without glitter, did you? Um, so we're going to be adding two different glitter colors. One is going to be Splish Splash from Diamond and Dust. And this is a fine cut, and it's got kind of an opal shine to it. So it looks really good against that pale blue background. The second color that we're going to be adding is a chunk of mix from Peachy Olive Glitter called Bertha. This color to me is a very understated color. I don't think people really realize just what an amazing glitter she is. And I love the way that as plain as she looks in the jar, she adds so much sparkle and pop to whatever you put her against. So as you see, I'm just coming in and I'm just doing the sprinkle method with my fingers. You don't want to dump it straight from the container because you risk covering up all of your flowers. Once you have the glitter on and your epoxy has cured for about two hours, go ahead and come in with a second coat. Once that has cured, you are going to want to do some additional prep work to this cup. As you can see here, um, this is all of the sparkle that we've added and now we're ready to work on cleaning up this cup. A lot of people are confused by cleaning up a non-glittered cup because well, you're not really sanding down glitter. However, you still need to make sure that your cup has a good seal so that as it gets used and tops get taken on and off, you don't risk cracking the seal around your design. So I'm gonna come in and clean up my room like I do to all of my cups using an X-Acto knife blade just to remove excess epoxy. From there, I'm gonna come in with 150 grit sanding paper. I don't need to use anything stronger than that because we don't have a bunch of chunky glitter that is sitting near the rim of our cup. You're gonna come in and at a 45 degree angle, you're going to hold your sandpaper in one hand at and rotate the cup in the other. What this does is allows you to get a very fine but even line of stainless steel around the rim of the cup. This is gonna be where our last layers of epoxy are going to adhere to. I did not film adding those last layers of epoxy because, well, you guys have seen me do that so many times before. But once all of your layers have cured, your cup is ready to go. I did have to do a little extra sanding on this because I added the glitter, but it was totally drama free and I moved down to a 220 grit. Just make sure that all of your final layers of epoxy are completely cured before you use your cup. I like to let mine sit for 72 hours, even when I'm using my quick coat epoxy um, to do this. That's because the epoxy still needs that time to set before you use it or wash it for any final use. Now you have a beautiful hand-painted cup that I am sure anybody in your life would absolutely love to have as a gift, or if you're like me, you might just keep it for yourself. So if you enjoyed all of the techniques that I showed you today in this tutorial, please give this video a big thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel. You guys have no idea what it means to me to have the support from this amazing community. I absolutely love sharing these tips and tricks with you and I love 
helping you get outside of your comfort zone just a little bit. And while alcohol inks might seem a little challenging, I promise you they are going to become one of your favorite mediums to work with. So once again, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Make sure to head over to Facebook and join my Facebook group. We go live every Wednesday and we have tons of fun over there. So until next time, guys, stay creative.